Hey YouTube, um, I thought I'd stop by today and talk a little bit about this sleight of hand going on in the uh, late second, early third century, where you have uh, characters that are being uh, created, uh, characters that are dividing, and obviously this comes off the heels of my last video, which was on John, and again, it's my take, as far as I can tell, that uh, John the Baptist, John the Apostle, um, John of Patmos, and even Elder John or Presbyter John are probably all fictional. Um, or if you want to call it traditional, that's fine, but they're fictional. Um, even someone like John the Baptist, who Josephus mentions, uh, when you read Josephus, it appears that Josephus is not Jew not uh, Christian. He's Jewish, but he's not Christian. Yet, he appears to have come in contact with some teachings of Christianity. So it doesn't necessarily bother me that uh, Josephus would mention someone like John the Baptist and claim that he was historical if he's already coming into contact with basically Jews at the time who are claiming that John the Baptist was back there, he just reports it. Uh, same thing if it talks about uh, James, the brother of Jesus, or really Jesus in any other type of setting. Uh, and I remember I'd talked about uh, Jesus, the son of uh, Ananus quite some time ago. And I do suspect that that is not only authentic to Josephus, but he is literally talking about the Jesus that the Christians are talking about. He just gets it wrong. Um, he what what the Christians are saying doesn't make sense to him, so he puts it in terms that make sense. Um, but anyway, all that is to say that that still doesn't make John the Baptist any more real, even if Josephus does mention him. And again, Josephus mentions a lot of things that aren't real, so you have to be careful, uh, particularly when you're talking about something theological and it comes to Josephus. Josephus. <clears throat> uh, beyond that, we have Elder John, who I just mentioned. Elder John was first mentioned by Papias, assumably. Um, Papias is quoted in 325 by Eusebius. So, you know, the how much of Papias we have is not much. And on the on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, his dates could be terribly wrong. We don't really know. Papias is somewhere around 140-ish. And that's great. Papias mentions him at 140. We could just say that. If that's all true, uh, that's still 70 years after the theology is created. And again, the first theology is Johannine. It's uh, Gospel of John, Apocalypse of John, Gospel of Nicodemus. And it's very likely that the author of those texts was not named John or Nicodemus. Very, very likely or anything close to that. He's claiming that these texts were written by somebody earlier, um, that he discovered these stories. So, but if if you go a few years later, a few decades later, this the followers of his tradition, the tradition started by this guy, this mystery man around 70, they're claiming to follow John. They're claiming to follow Nicodemus. They're not, they're, they are claiming to be followers of these people. So later theologians can look at them and say, and assume basically that there was a John back there that started the theology, just because that's what the followers are saying. Even though, once again, there wasn't an actual John back there. They were just following what their theologians were saying. They were just following these texts that these and these characters that their theologians were talking about. So having a presbyter John or Elder John in uh, the middle of the second century that doesn't give us a real John back there around 70. And again, like I said earlier, it's very unlikely that the actual theologian that started this theology named the books after himself. That's very unlikely. Uh, just in the same case with uh, Marcion, you know, we can call it the gospel of Marcion all we want, 
that's not what they called it. They didn't call it the gospel of Markion. They called it the gospel of the Lord or the gospel of Christ. Gospel of Markion is just a convenient way of putting it to a convenient way of noting who the author was. Um, okay. So off of John for a little bit, I think, let's see. I mentioned John the Baptist. I mentioned, uh, well, John, the apostle, I'm sure is fictional. I mentioned elder John, John of Patmos. I, there's no reason really to talk too much about him. He's, he's probably so late in, uh, that the tradition was made anyway, that he's not really all that relevant, but, uh, other, uh, examples of the sleight of hand business that's going on in this, in the case of John, it's just a matter of the, you have a, a, some texts named John and it's important to know who wrote them, but nobody wants to certainly, you don't want to pin it on John the Baptist who ends up being revered and very important when he's, he is important in a sense to the theology, but he's not, he's not important enough that you have to keep him around. So they kill him off. So I've talked about all those characters. Uh, let's talk about uh, John Mark. John Mark, in the last video, I, I mentioned that John Mark may have been a real person. That was the wrong way to put it. John Mark was based on a real person. Uh, and what I think happened, we have a John Mark uh, that we can pretty well say existed. Not he. It's not a hundred percent, but again, um, that John Mark is Mark John or Markion. Markion, if you break it down, is two names. It's two names fused together. It's Mark and John. Um, <clears throat> the tradition of John Mark doesn't isn't created basically until Acts of the Apostles with Tertullian. And again, talking briefly about Papias again. It is curious that this Papias character never mentions Paul. He never mentions Luke. He never mentions a John Mark character. None of those characters does Papias mention because Papias drops a lot of names. He's, of course, in the uh, middle of the second century, again, around uh, 140-ish. Tertullian comes along. We'll call him about 210. Let's call Tertullian about 210. And... He says that he doesn't know who Paul is, which if you're aware of the consensus, if you're aware of what Catholic tradition states about its own theology, it's a ludicrous assumption to say that Tertullian wouldn't know who Paul is. That's absurd. Um, it, it just can't happen. Paul, by this time, has to be the golden child of Christianity. If he's the way that the Catholics have presented their history He's got to be known by the third century. He has to be known in the second century. You know, um, so around 210, somewhere around there, Tertullian doesn't know who Paul is. And this is during a highly rhetorical rant against Marcion, who's been dead for probably 50 years or so. Um, so Marcion's not going to have a reply for him, but he's... Uh, Saying basically, he 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 asks, uh, you know, who this Paul character is. You know, how much did it cost you to pay him off, and Mark Yon, and all this stuff? Where did you find him? And then he gets down to this point of uh, presenting the acts of the apostles. So he says, "Well, surely you must accept this acts of the apostles." Again, Mark Yon's been dead uh, for a while. Um, so it all sounds really nice and strange, which we expect out of Tertullian. Um, it also sounds very made up, which we also expect out of Tertullian. Tertullian is the, also the person who created the, the idea of a character named Ebion to create the Ebionites, which the Ebionites are the poor or the poor men. And the poor, he's claiming, were created by a guy named Poor. That makes no sense. So Tertullian just lacks information a lot of times. So, I mean, but again, with Paul, the character's supposed to be so 
it, vitally important to the theology, at least according to the Catholics and Orthodoxy and everybody else that survived. He's supposed to be so vital to theology, yet nobody knows who he is. Um, all the way up to Tertullian. If you go back through um, the previous theolo the theologians and, and read what they say, nobody knows who this character is. Nobody knows Paul. Tertullian fix it, fixes it. And he puts Paul in Acts of the Apostles. Well, he didn't just put Paul in Acts of the Apostles. He also put Marcion in Acts of the Apostles. Again, Tertullian not being terribly good at this. Uh, obviously, he didn't have a very good uh, grasp of the time frame either. But he puts Marcion in Acts of the Apostles. And it's just a very brief thing. Um, there, There is a point in Acts of the Apostles where Paul and his entourage are going to uh, some city and Mark John or John Mark um, is a part of this entourage. John Mark character decides he's going to go somewhere else. And I think he went home back to Jerusalem anyway. So that's, that's all it said about it. John Mark goes this way. Paul goes that way. And so, you know, Paul's going around getting kicked out of synagogues, getting arrested and all that sort of thing. And then they come back and they meet up later. And uh, Paul decides, you know, we're going to go to this other city. And I think it was Barnabas that asked Paul if John Mark could go. And Paul flips his lid, absolutely loses his mind because John Mark didn't come with us to this other city. Therefore, he can't go with us to this, this new city that I'm proposing. For no reason. He just loses his mind. Okay. It's a silly little story. But this this goofy little weird story that makes no sense in the Acts of the Apostles is Tertullian to Tr ugh, Tertullian writing in Marcion. He's Tertullian is claiming that this is where the division between Paul and Marcion comes from. Marcion simply went a different direction, and that's why you don't follow Marcion. And the ultimately the reason for putting Marcion in that text is to salvage Paul, which, again, it didn't matter what you thought of the Marcionite theology or Marcion himself, the Pauline letters were terribly important to the, to the uh, particularly after Bar Kokhba, revolt where it is becoming obvious that a Gentile version of this theology is going to work. It's going to be successful. And Paul, if anything, he's anti-Jewish in his texts. So this, these are the texts that make up the most important parts of Christianity. It, 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 breaks Christianity away from Judaism and that's the future of the theology that's where all the growth is the Pauline letters are working but the theologian that wrote them Marcion he obviously has to go and this is Tertullian's version of it of course that puts Marcion in exactly the wrong century um, he's far too early about a century earlier than than uh, or, or nearly a century earlier than he was teaching so you know the timing's wrong and ultimately that'll be a problem that's why in tradition today you've got this nebulous john mark character out there who everybody reveres sort of but nobody knows why he's just a good guy you know and then you have mark Yon, this evil character on the other side it's largely a an effect of they 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 weren't in the right time frame. Other theologians were fully aware that Marcion wasn't that early. You know, Tertullian got it wrong. But then again, like like I said earlier, um, Paul's not there either. You know, they put Paul and Marcion this this generated conflict um, far too early for it to have happened. Um, Anyway, I think that's all I have to say about Mark Yon, John Mark, Mark John. Um, 
but there are other characters where there's sleight of hand going on as well. Um, Irenaeus or Irenaeus mentions the Nicolaitans, and again, Irenaeus is the most likely person to have completed Revelation. And in the Book of Revelation, we also have this strange mention about Jesus hating the Nicolaitans. All that's great. Um, and then, of course, Nick, the Nicolaitans supposedly came from Nicholas, which we hear about from uh, Tertullian. No, well, uh, assuming that he wrote Acts of the Apostles, that would be Tertullian. We hear about it from Acts of the Apostles. So Nicholas created the Nicolaitans. What do we know about these Nicolaitans? They followed the Gospel of John, according to Irenaeus. And we know some heresy claims, some of which sound very plausible, like the idea that the theologians at least didn't believe that Jesus was flesh. Again, that makes sense. How is it that the Logos can take on flesh? Or that rather that the flesh can contain the Logos? That doesn't make any sense. So if the first theologians were Logos based, it would make sense that the Logos appeared to be flesh, but not that the Logos was actual flesh. Again, this is a this is a conflict between theologians not between followers what the followers believe is somewhat different what they know and what they believe is somewhat different than what the theologians believe um but anyway so you've got this nicholas who creates the nicolaitans they followed the gospel of john as i said earlier the gospel of john gospel of nicodemus and the apocalypse of john were very likely the first text well Nicodemus and Nicholas mean virtually the same thing. Nicodemus and Nicholas both mean victory of or from the people. So we have two characters whose name means virtually the same thing coming from what appears to be exactly the same time. One of the curious things about uh, Irenaeus, his mentions, is that he does seem to put Nicholas considerably earlier than Marcion, which the reason why that's curious to me is that if if he can't if he can put it later you know and if he can if he could move the Nicolaitans to the middle of the of the second century and nobody knew about it i think he would you know i think he would do exactly that if he could get away with it but the, the thing is is that <clears throat> that there seems to be a a feeling anyway that the Nicolaitans, no matter what he argues about them, he can't get them to move. Uh, that other theologians are aware that the Nicolaitans are rather old um, compared to, say, someone like Marcion, who comes around 120s, 130s. <clears throat> that there's just no getting around the dates for the Nicolaitans. They're just far older than that. Um, but anyhow... Nicholas and Nicodemus mean basically the same thing. What I think probably occurred is, again, just like the, the, the question of the name of John, where people are claiming that they follow John in some capacity, whether it's the teachings, the traditions, um, the books, whatever. They're claiming they follow John. They're later theologians, later followers even assume that there is a person back there named John that's teaching all this stuff. Same thing with uh, Nicodemus. People are claiming that they follow traditions or teachings or, or uh, laws around this character of Nicodemus. Um, what Nicholas provides, later theologians, is a way of targeting the Nicolaitans um, without destroying Nicodemus. So you set up this kind of shadow puppet character of Nicholas and you vent all of your rage towards him. Um, according to, Ni to uh, Irenaeus, uh, the Nicolaitans didn't believe he was flesh, uh, didn't believe Jesus was flesh, and there seems to be some something sexual, some kind of sexual issue, either polygamy or perhaps homosexuality, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Um, but that uh, these things were all very heretical and immoral and all that good stuff. So um, he, 
Irenaeus and theologians like him want to demonize this version of the theology without demonizing the characters. Just in the same in the same way they wanted uh, Tertullian wanted to demonize uh, Marcion without demonizing his texts, which are the Pauline letters. So, and again, it's very likely the same person is the, you know, that the same person that created Marcionism also wrote these texts. That's very likely. So they, by creating the Nicolaitans or rather Nicholas, they, uh, they save Nicodemus. They burn down this effigy of a character named Nicholas and when followers are going on about oh Nicodemus did this you know Nicodemus was a great man Nicodemus said this the theologians can come back and say no no you're following a teaching of Nicholas this this other guy not Nicodemus and that's their way of pushing all pushing off Nicol the Nicolaitans and calling them heretical explaining the heresy without destroying their characters. Um, and again, the Nicolaitans probably called themselves Jews. That's, that's uh, the likelihood. They're not calling themselves Nicolaitans. Um, those, those terms, the Nicolaitans, Marcionites, uh, Valentinians, those are for classif classification purposes by later theologians who want to claim that these early theologies are heresies. You know, the Marcionites probably call themselves Christians. The Johannine, like I said, probably called themselves Jews when they weren't calling themselves Christians. So uh, the Ebionites may have called themselves the Ebionites, but most of these theologies are calling themselves Christians. Some of them are probably maybe calling themselves Jews. Um, but anyhow, that's uh, Nicholas. Well, let's see. Uh, Theophilus of Antioch. Theophilus of Antioch. Um, again, Theophilus doesn't make any sense to me. Theophilus and Tatian uh, both live in roughly the same time. They also live in roughly the same area. Theophilus of Antioch is obviously in Antioch, unless there are some weird traditions that have him in Caesarea Philippi. But uh, Antioch, Caesarea Philippi, uh, Tatian is in either Antioch or Caesarea Philippi or in perhaps northern Mesopotamia. Um, so we got the same time frame, roughly same area. Are these two people different? If you read Apology to Autolycus, the three books of Theophilus of Antioch, you'll notice that in this apology, he, uh, he begins by being rather mild about it, this kind of mild argument. And then he ratchets it up in the uh, second book. So he gets a little bit more angry. And then in the third book, he's even angrier. And if you take Tatian's book, the one that's available, and you make it the fourth book of Theophilus of Antioch, it all makes perfect sense. You've got the same apology. It's just even worse. It's, a, it's even more rage coming out of this character. So the likelihood, again, is that Theophilus of Antioch and Tatian are the same person divided for various reasons doesn't doesn't really matter why maybe um maybe the the first three books became separated from the fourth book and it was just assumed that that uh this was a separate separate person back here i don't know i don't know why it is but everything kind of points to the idea excuse me that theophilus and Tatian are the same person and again if the awful sensation are the same person, Luke, which is very likely written by Irenaeus, was addressed to Theophilus. Tatian is the author of the Diatessaron. So all of a sudden, Luke starts to look like a text that was written to send to a person for a very specific purpose. And that purpose is to uh, collect four gospels and then to convert them into the diatessaron all of which makes sense it makes quite a bit of sense but uh, that would also substantiate in a back way uh, dating Luke so late but uh, anyway that's another character that probably divided and his the division the of Theophilus and Tatian may not be 
so um i don't know i want to say devious but you know when they when these characters like nicholas with the character of nicholas just simply being created in order to salvage um in order to salvage nicodemus you know or markion being demonized to salvage paul but then you put them both in the first century i don't know there is a, a certain amount of uh fictionalization and outright fraud going on by these theologians how they get around it i'm not really sure but they're theologians they can get around just about anything um let's see is there any i there, there is one other one uh, that's ignatius and theophorus these people you know even in modern day uh christianity with the popes you know once these these popes get elected all of a sudden they take on these these new names that's a tradition there um pope i don't know what are we on i don't know who what i don't even know what the pope's name is now theophorus and ignatius both actually both of those names kind of sound made up but why are they the same person you know it doesn't make any sense they they play rather loosely with names anyway long video uh, we'll see if i post it <laughs> i'll talk to y'all later thanks bye